Uh, nearly every year, the collective total of global financial assets increases. Global wealth increases. We have occasional sharp corrections as we had in 1987 and 2008, and shortly thereafter, we're back again setting all-time highs. Every year, millions of more people around the world join the ranks of those with investable assets. Many of these people want assistance with their investment decisions. All of these people want profitable investments. For these reasons, I am bullish on the financial services industry. I also believe there is an inherent amount of instability among the world's interrelated financial markets. If policymakers strive to maintain stable interest rates, stable exchange rates, and gently rising stock markets, I believe their actions also compress a spring which inevitably expands, often with gusto, resetting these relationships. Because I believe in this dynamic instability across the world of finance, I believe there will always be opportunity in the world of trading and active asset management. So if you're planning on a career in finance or trading, I believe you're making a wise choice. The world does not make it easy on young people. It never has. You need to struggle, strive relentlessly, prove yourself, and do it over and over again. It's wonderful. As they say in The Lion King, it's the cycle of life. I found a couple interesting quotes about young people. The young people of today think of nothing but themselves. They have no reverence for parents or old age. They are impatient of all restraint. They talk as if they knew everything, and what passes for wisdom with us is foolishness with them. As for girls, they are forward, immodest, and unwomanly in speech, behavior, and dress. That was Socrates in 400 B.C. Here's another one. Our young men have grown slothful. There is not a single honorable occupation for which they will toil night and day. They sing and dance and grow effeminate and curl their hair and learn womanish tricks of speech. They are as languid as women and deck themselves out with unbecoming ornaments. Without strength, without energy, they add nothing during life to the gifts with which they were born. Then they complain of their lot. That was Seneca in the first century. There's one more. Our earth is degenerate in these later days. There are signs that the world is speedily coming to an end. Bribery and corruption are common. Children no longer obey their parents. Every man wants to write a book, and the end of the world is evidently approaching. That was the Assyrian clay tablet in 2800 BC. So, such is a lot of young people. I, I think young people have been getting short-sheeted since time immortal and don't feel particularly oppressed if you feel that way at times. Regardless of what direction your career takes, I want to offer a few old-school bits of advice. Earlier this year, I joined a few colleagues, colleagues in Ireland offering these suggestions to students completing their master's degrees. I believe these are a path to success regardless of your career. Have a strong work ethic. Work hard. It shocks me every day at 5 o'clock when I look at the race to the elevator, as if only the first few are going to get out of the building. You know, just because you have to work to five when you're beginning your career doesn't mean you can only work to five. Another thing about work ethic as you get out of college is after sometimes a couple years of preschool, a year of kindergarten, 12 years of uh, regular education, four years of college education, and then if you get a master's degree, you can feel when you enter the workforce as if, oh my gosh, I'm finally done. Recognize that your employer is going to view you as just crossing the starting line. So you have to make up your mind, are you crossing the starting line or are you crossing the finish line? And if you're crossing the starting line and realize this is the first opportunity for your employer to get to see what you can do, make it count. Grit, persistence, again, they go hand in hand with work ethic. Resilience, be resilient. It's not always going to go great. You're going to have a lot of things go against you. Bounce back, be resilient. Have passion for what you do. doesn't matter what you're doing. You're the, you're, the, you're the guy cleaning, cleaning the room. You're the custodian. You can do it with passion or you can hate your job. Do it with passion. Work like a business owner. Believe me, there's going to be business owners and senior manage, managers in your company that are going to be looking for people who have that attitude, who work as if they are an owner of the company. Work like a business owner. Have an ability to get along with others. If you want to get promoted, but you're the guy that can't get along with other people, who in the world is going to promote you? So throughout your career... Work hard to get along with others, regardless of whether they're your favorite person or not. Work hard to get along with other people. 
Have integrity. One of the phrases I hate is when I hear people say, oh, that guy's got a lot of integrity. Because I've always viewed integrity as a binary quality. You either have it or you don't. You're either honest or you're not. Have integrity. And these are the types of decisions as you, as you finish out your maturity process as young adults, you're going off to the workforce, decide who you want to be, how you want to be, and be that way. Have integrity. Network. Network can kind of sound like a sleazy word at times. Oh, I want you to network. Think about networking. Going out to a bar, meeting friends, you're a young person, the people that you socialize with. Get out and meet people. Meet people early in your career. Some of the people you meet when you're 22, later on when you're 45, they're still your friends. John Lothian and I have known each other decades. Brian Dirk and I have known each other decades. Sean Smith. So, like everyone else, I love this industry. And get out and about a bit. Meet people. And whatever industry you wind, out, wind up in, get, get out in the industry, meet people, network a, a bit, and it also helps your career. Continually build your knowledge base. So, I'm 60. I still read the Wall Street Journal. At least try to read a lot of the Wall Street Journal every day, as well as a bunch of other articles. And I read John Lothian's newsletter pretty much every day. Uh, education is a, a lifelong thing. It's a permanent thing. You don't get out of school and say, oh, my education's over with. You're just starting your industry-specific education when you get out of school. Have attention to detail, whatever you're doing. It's critical. Follow through on everything that you're doing. Not everybody does, and this is important. Our founding father, George Washington, in 1790, gave this piece of advice to his nephew. A good moral character is the first essential. It is highly important that you should endeavor not only to be learned, but virtuous. And I, I couldn't agree more with that comment. George Washington also had a sort of favorite book of his when he was a young kid, 12 years old. There was a book called The Rules of Civility and Decent Behavior in Company and Conversation, first published by the French Jesuits in 1595. Washington hand-copied the English version of this book when he was 12 years old, the whole book. And there's some old news in there that's ridiculous, like, you know, don't miss the spittoon when you spit and things like that. But there's a lot of really relevant information. You can Google it. It's easy to find. John Lothian and I have both been very involved in Boy Scouts. We have a slogan in Boy Scouts, do a good turn daily. It's a good thing for everybody to keep in mind. Just every, every day, have in your mind, I want, to, I want to do something nice for someone today. Make it a point. There's little things that you can do to be nice. Smile at everyone you see. Be pleasant to everyone you work with and everyone you don't work with. Smile, be pleasant. You never know whose day you might be brightening a little bit, and they're easy things to do. There's an old phrase I used to use when I was young, dress for the job you want, not the job you have. That doesn't mean you have to be some fashion guru. You don't have to be a fashionista, but you don't necessarily want to be the worst dressed person in the office, and if you take your job seriously and want to be in line for a future promotion, then maybe you dress a little bit better than you have to. Write well. I, I couldn't emphasize this enough to young people. It's one of the uh, tragedies of our day. I don't know if it's brought on by texting. I don't know if it's brought on by the education system, but it seems very hard. You know, I'd, I'd say less than one out of ten employees we hire can write what I would consider reasonably well, write in a way that you'd be willing to share it with customers. So writing well will set you aside and above your coworkers. And it doesn't have to be, it's not a God-given gift, and you certainly can uh, study and learn how to write well and write effectively. You never know where a good piece of advice is going to come from. Uh, that song that Miley Cyrus had it, about the climb, I kind of liked the words to that song because I think that that is a, a lot of what life is about. You're not heading for a destination. Having a great life and being a success is about how you live. It's not somewhere you're getting to. It's what you're doing every day. It's about the climb. The best advice you're ever going to get in life is probably advice you got from your parents and that you still get from your parents. And often you're going to heed it more when you get it from someone other than your parents. But try to think about the advice your parents give you. They love you the most, they know you the best, and it's very likely that the advice they give you is the best tailored advice for you. One of the pieces of advice my dad used to regularly give us was that old Latin phrase, carpe diem. Seize the day is a somewhat close translation. Um, Every day when you wake up, make the most out of that day. Do something meaningful that day. Make every day count. Be sure to get along with members of your own sex. Another pitch of mine. There's nothing more revealing to me than a young, when a young lady or a young man tells me, oh, I don't get along with members of my own sex, but I get along with the opposite sex. You're only on an even playing field with members of your own sex. So if you're not getting along with members of your own sex, it's your problem, and uh, work on it.
Earlier in the talk, uh, we heard from Terry Savage, uh, equivalent of to thine own self be true, another great Shakespeare line from Hamlet. Again, you got to know yourself. With maturity and time, we learn that everything matters. Don't be overwhelmed. You're not growing up because you're 22. I think you grow up about 40. I had, a, I had an uncle who was a Catholic priest, and he used to regularly give this homily, and he said, 2,000 years ago, there was this guy, Jesus, and he did nothing of note for 30 years, and then in three years, the work he did changed the world. And his pitch was that if, if, 30, if 2,000 years ago it was 30 years, he, he said nowadays you've got to give people until at least 40 to grow up. And if between 40 years old and the time you pass, you can make a meaningful contribution to society, well, then that's a good thing. So, you know, if it takes you about 40 to grow up, that's about average. That's probably about what it took me. Be humble. Humility is a great virtue. Do your best. Make good decisions. You've already made a lot of good decisions, even to be here today. I know for all you interns, even coming here is a choice. So continue to make good decisions. The decisions you make are going to impact and affect your future. Give to the less fortunate. Don't wait until you make a bunch of money and then say, oh, I'm going to make a bunch of money and someday I'm going to give money away. Always make a sacrifice and give to the less fortunate. You know, you could decide, hey, I'm not going to buy a Starbucks coffee today. I'm going to take that five bucks and I'm going to go I'm going to go buy oatmeal for the guy with no legs who's at the corner of Adams and LaSalle every day. You know, you can make that decision. You can make that choice. You can do that good deed. You can put a smile on his face and your own. Whatever you do in your career and in your life, stamp your name on it. You're building a reputation whether you know it or not. What do you want to be known for? You want to be known for quality work. You want to be known for thoroughness. You want to be known for integrity. Think about what you want to be known for and do it. We're all products of a very me-centered world. Try and live your life as if it's not all about you. Thank you. Thanks, John.